Hello and welcome to the Dizziness and Balance video series by the Ear and Balance Institute. I am your host, Dr. Jerry Gianoli, and I am a board-certified neurootologist. Neurootology is the medical specialty that deals with inner ear dizziness and balance disorders. This video series is intended to be educational and not intended to be medical advice. For individual medical advice, please speak with your own physician. Today we're going to talk about drop attacks. Now what do I mean by drop attacks? We're talking about episodes with, where someone will drop to the ground without any warning and with no obvious cause for the drop. In other words, they didn't trip over a rock or lose their balance or something like that. They just went to the ground for no obvious reason. And then within seconds to minutes later, they're back to normal. Well, there's a lot of different reasons why someone can have a drop attack, uh, but you can basically break it up into three big categories. The first is the heart or the vascular system. If someone has an arrhythmia and their heart rate gets too slow, the blood flow to the brain can get diminished and you can have a drop attack. Similarly, you can have a drop in blood pressure that can do the same kind of thing. Um, the second is the brain. Um, the most common is a seizure disorder uh, where someone will have a, a, a mini seizure. They'll drop to the ground and then it'll be over quickly afterwards. And the last is the ear. Um, there's a, a condition called the otolithic crisis of Tumarkin that will cause a sudden drop uh, uh, to the ground without any loss of consciousness or, or uh, any warning. Now, the easiest way to determine whether it's from the brain, the heart, or the ear is whether you lose consciousness or not. With the ear, you almost never lose consciousness. However, when it's a brain or, or heart or vascular related problem, you almost always do lose consciousness. So if you have attacks where you drop to the ground and you don't lose consciousness and there's no obvious reason for it, there's a good chance you've got an inner ear condition. Well, why does this happen? Um, now, we have a video out uh, that's called Vestibular Reflexes and Symptoms, and I go through all the different reflexes from the inner ear. And one of the reflexes is to all the muscles of posture. And specifically, there are gravity sensors in your ear, and we call these the otolithic organs, and they measure where gravity is. And if there's a sudden disruption in that sensation, you can get loss of postural tone and drop to the ground. Um, the, the, there's two otolithic organs, the utricle and the saccule, and the saccule is presumably the one that is cause of the problem. Well, how do you evaluate this? How do you determine whether someone has what type of drop attack? And the first is just history. If the patient has a history of vertigo problems, inner ear problems, hearing loss, tinnitus, specifically Meniere's disease, you'd have to have a high suspicion that they have drop attacks from their inner ear. On the other hand, if they've had cardiac problems or or had brain trauma or, or history of seizures, you have to think about brain or heart-related problems. Secondly is the physical exam, and there's things we doctors can do to evaluate to see if someone's got a vestibular problem or a heart-related problem. One of the easy things that most doctors do is they'll do blood pressure checks when the patient's lying down and when they stand up to see if there's a precipitous drop in the blood pressure that may kind of predispose someone to having a vascular related drop attack. And in those patients who we've identified as possibly having an inner ear problem, then we can do testing to confirm this. If we do testing and confirm this, there's a number of different inner ear problems that uh, can cause this. Traditionally, the one that's been proposed as the main cause for drop attacks is Meniere's disease. Um, and if you look at the studies, that's probably a good half of the patients that have drop attacks. They can ascribe it to Meniere's disease. But there's 
several other inner ear disorders that can cause drop attacks. You can see it with BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. That's that disorder where there's the loose crystals in the inner ear. You can see it with superior canal dehiscence and other third mobile window disorders, perilymphatic fistula, migraine, and others. Uh, but once you get past BPPV, the others are much less common. Well, how do we treat this? Well, traditionally among ear doctors, this is, as we mentioned, a life-threatening problem because you can imagine if, if you suddenly lose postural tone and fall to the ground and you're at the top of a flight of stairs, it could be life-threatening. Or if you're on, you know, a ladder, um, this is a potentially very dangerous condition. It's not like you'll have a warning and know to get off the ladder in time. So it's something we take very seriously, and it's something that we're much more aggressive with. The traditional treatment is what we basically an amputation of, of the inner ear. And what I mean by that is when you identify which ear is causing the drop attacks, you can do things to get rid of the function and stop the drop attacks, and that's highly, highly successful in its treatment. Uh, there's three different ways you can sort of destroy the function of the inner ear. Uh, one is with uh, a, a simple injection of genomycin, which is an antibiotic uh, that is toxic to the inner ear, and it basically kind of chemically kills the inner ear and can stop the drop attacks. Uh, second is uh, a vestibular nerve section. In that surgery, uh, basically, we go behind the ear, and between the brain and the ear, we cut the nerve connecting the inner ear to the brain stem, and that will also stop drop attacks. And then the last and the most successful of the three is something called a labyrinthectomy. In that procedure, we go through the inner ear and basically just drill it all out and get rid of it. Uh, and that's the most highly successful of the three approaches for getting rid of drop attacks. Now, over the years, we have found these, the patients don't always need to be so aggressively treated. And there's other ways of dealing with uh, drop attacks short of destroying the inner ear. The first approach for that is figuring out, well, what exactly is the problem that's causing it. And if it's Meniere's disease, which is the most common, there's a procedure called an endolymphatic sac uh, surgery, and there's variations on that theme. It's an outpatient surgery, and it's geared toward improving the function of the inner ear. That has a very good success rate on stopping drop attacks. It's, it's not as good as labyrinthectomy, but it does save the ear. The other surgical procedures that can be done are geared toward those individual problems. For example, if you've got superior canal dehiscence, repairing the dehiscence would uh, resolve the drop attacks, and paralymphatic fistula repair would do it as well. Now, short of that, there's medical means, and f most patients with Meniere's disease are treated very well with medical measures, um, but uh, if you're having drop attacks in spite of medical therapy, that's a pretty strong indication to do something surgical. And as I mentioned, it's because of the fear of falls. Uh, in particular, in the elderly, uh, and we're talking about the over 70 crowd, falls are probably the number one cause for morbidity and mortality, uh, broken hips, uh, deaths, et cetera. So in conclusion, um, there, there's a thing called drop attacks that is caused by the inner ear. Then most of the time, if you have uh, a drop attack and you have not lost consciousness, it's due to an inner ear source. Uh, there are treatments for this, uh, and they're very highly successful. Thank you.